All right, first question. Mr. Fong, where were you born and raised? I was born in uh, Canton, China, in, uh, on November 23, 1928. And I was raised up in... Uh, little town called Widener, Arkansas, W-I-D-E-N-E-R, Widener, Arkansas. Yeah. Can you tell Impact International a little bit about your educational background? Yes, I, uh, when I came uh, to the United States at five years old in 1934, with my mother, uh, my uh, father was running a grocery store in the little town, and uh, so uh, at seven years old I started first grade at Wagner, and then uh, the school closed down uh, when I uh, finished second grade. The third grade went to another little town about six miles from there called Madison. Mm -hmm. And so I finished my elementary school uh, years there, and then went to uh, Far City High School, junior high and high school, mm -hmm. Far City, F-O-R-R-E-S-T, okay. to, to uh, Harvest. And after I graduated, uh, I wasn't planning to go to college. In fact, I was kind of like a, a because I was raised in Arkansas, and, and they were racist there. They would call me Ching Chong Chinaman and all that mm -hmm. business. And I used to fight all the time. That's how I got started in the, in the martial arts. Okay. Uh, eventually. Okay. But at that time, there was no martial arts, uh, you know, as far as uh, uh, kung fu and karate and all that. My father used to tell me about these kung fu masters putting their fingers through boards and, mm -hmm. and bricks and all that stuff. Right. And so I used to say to uh, to him, I said, ah, that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was a cocky little guy. You know? Yeah. And, and so he said, well, you'll see. He said, your uncle. Yeah. You know how small he is, but, uh, you know, he uh, he learned kung fu, and, and that's how he handled himself in Chicago when he was running this restaurant. People come in to eat and wouldn't pay. He'd just go after them, you know? Okay. So, uh, so I, that was in my mind all, uh, since I was growing up. Yeah. But I never really uh, conceived that, uh, you know, uh, you can break bricks and uh, boards and all that stuff. And he used to tell me about these Buddhist monks coming to the village and mm -hmm. they beg and people tease them and they didn't know any better and then they, they jump out from where they are and just beat the hell out of them. Wow. And, and so, so he said, but the, all the monks did was they train, they meditate, but they didn't work. Mm -hmm. They had the people in the village fed them. Mm -hmm. You know, they go from village to village, and so he told me all these stories. Okay. And and then then, then so what happened is uh, so when I go to school, kids, the first day I went to school when I was seven years old, mm -hmm. uh, they were calling me Ching Chong China and singing a song with it. You know? mm -hmm. So I just smiled. I didn't know what was going on. And I said, "Well, I get a lot of attention here." Yeah. So when I went home. My father said, "Well." Uh, how do you how how do you like school? Mm -hmm. I said, Well, it's okay. Everybody, you know, likes me. They all sing songs to me. And they said, What's his thing? I said, He called me Chick Chong. <laughs> <laughs> and so he said, Hey, that's, they don't like you. They, they tease you. Yeah. They, they make fun of it. I, I said, see. Really? And so when I went back the uh, next day, uh, we were uh, in recess and playing uh, uh, a game of softball or something. Mm -hmm. And the guy called me Chick Chong Time. And, Bam! I, I popped him out in the face, <laughs> and uh, and uh, and so uh, so I got in trouble with my teacher. Uh -huh. It didn't turn out my teacher, one of my best, my family's best friend. You know, uh -huh. we talked about. In fact, I mentioned that to her when we got married. I invited her to. Uh, she's seven something years old. Yeah. So I I, I asked her. I said, Miss Carey, you remember that time that I punched that kid and then you you turned me over. And, trying to spank me, and, 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 and at the time, you you know, you were about 25 years old, you had a tight sweater on, and I just look at I remember, I remember, you know, how well she was built, you know, <laughs> I was seven years old. So you had a good memory. Yeah, I had a good memory. Yeah. But anyway, that's how I got started, and then, so, as I progressed in my education, yeah. constantly people teased me, mm -hmm. so back in, in the early 40s, a Montgomery Ward catalog uh, came to the house, mm -hmm. and I saw this whole section mm -hmm. of books in the Montgomery Ward catalog. There mm -hmm. was one uh, book called Jiu-Jitsu by uh, 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 Zoju uh, uh, Yoshima and the Welch, something like that. Uh -huh. I ordered that book. And I lost a copy, but I found one in an old bookstore about a year ago, and then I picked it up and I got it. Okay. It was uh, written back in the 30s. Wow, so, so a real great. Yeah. And then the book on How to Box by Barney Ross, and I still have it. Wow. 
In fact, I still have that book at home, and okay. I bought that in 1942. So I learned how to box, read that book. I, okay. I used to hang up some. And, and so uh, I graduated from uh, from uh, Far City High School, and, and what I'm, I'm doing here is laying foundation, that I had no intention of going to college. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I got into trouble beating people up, and they beat me up, and, and finally I got kicked out of school. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, uh, after about six weeks, uh, uh, my father said, you guys are in trouble, I'm going to bail you out. Mm -hmm. So a neighbor uh, of my father, who was also racist, but he wasn't racist to us, he was racist to blacks, you know, okay. in, 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 the, in the town. Mm -hmm. And so he said, well, okay, he said, it's not fair. Uh, 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 chief, he called my father Chief, he said, let mm -hmm. this kid uh, run around here and not get an education, so I'm going to go up to the principal and talk to him and get him back in school. Okay. So I told him, he said, now, he said, boy, he said, if I get you back in school, you won't get in trouble no more. I said, no, not if they don't quit calling me China, China you know, uh -huh. change on China. Yeah. I said, if they don't say that, I'm okay. Okay. But if they say that, I don't care what they say it, I'm going to uh, kick butt. You know? Yeah. And so, uh, so he went and talked to the principal and they let me back in. And uh, so everything's okay. You know, I, I get an occasional fight here and there. Yeah. Somebody uh, always, uh, you know, making fun of my, my race and my, uh, my heritage. Right. And, and so, um, so, I, uh, so anyway, when I was in the, uh, about 16 and a half, 17 years old, mm -hmm. I got sick. Mm -hmm. And I had a high fever, and, and it was just lingering off a couple of weeks, two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. Seemed like forever. And my father didn't believe in going to doctors. Okay. He would doctor me with, with, uh, with uh, Chinese herbs. Okay. And then my mother would always feed me castor oil. That was her answer to everything. <laughs> castor oil. Castor oil. Uh, something that leaves you out. You know? And then after that, then she would feed you Chinese uh, porridge, you know, the, the, they call it joke. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. And it's, it's, it's made out of rice and it's real thin. Yeah. So if he do that, it gets you back uh, in shape. And so I got scared, you know. So I, 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 but in the meantime, I was going to church every week too. Mm -hmm. See, I didn't go to church because I was religious. I went to church to get out of working in the grocery store. Okay. Because my parents were very strict about me running around. Yeah. You go to school, you come back here. So uh, that's why I go wild when I go to school. Okay. So I come back and work in the store. So the only time they let me off. When I'm not in school, I mm -hmm. go to church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I used to steal cigarettes out of the store, mm -hmm. go to church, and crawl under the, the church. Mm -hmm. and a buddy of mine would sit there and smoke out of We could hear the preacher preaching. <laughs> so you were at, officially at church. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was getting religion by osmosis. <laughs> and so, uh, so what happened was, uh, so I said, well, you know, they pray. And, and the preacher said, if you pray, God will give you your wish. Yeah. So I said, I pray. So that's that one time I didn't have work. I was so sick. I told my mom I just can't. I, I'm sick. Mm -hmm. I said I got a headache. I got my fever. My, my head is hot. Right. So she said, okay, you don't need to work because uh, Saturday night, see, uh, we live right in the middle of cotton country. Okay. And then and, and the whole uh, everybody in the cotton fields come out on on Saturday nights. Right. And so they they hang around town and nothing to do. There's a, there's a tavern down the street. They mm -hmm. play this loud music. Then they come to the store and they keep back and forth buying uh, drinks and, mm -hmm. and, and, and cookies and, and just this uh, uh, junk food, you know. Right. And they just socialize in there and, and they just a whole, uh, just body to body. I mean, amazing how many people <laughs> pack in the store. Yeah. And so, so all my sister, my brother, everybody had to work that, that to make sure to keep an eye on everybody's on their steel. Okay. So I didn't have to work. So they worked till about two in the morning and then they closed up. Mm -hmm. And so I, I remember. I was laying there about 9 o'clock, I was hot as I could be. Mm -hmm. and I said, oh Lord, I said, if you can make me well again, mm -hmm. don't let me die, I will be anything you want to be. I'll be a minister, I'll be anything. Mm -hmm. And you know, about 11.30, 12 o'clock, uh, I fell asleep, and then, then when I woke up, I was, the, the bed sheet was wet as could be. I mm -hmm. broke out into a you know, sweat. Yeah. Like a fever for me. Yeah, fever. Sweat. I felt so good. And I had a, a, a thing hanging up uh, in the room, uh, a, a, a pillowcase stuffed full of old clothes while I was punching. Okay. And then I had a chinny bar up there. Mm -hmm. I got up and I felt good and I punched that bag and I jumped on the chinny bar and did some chin ups. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so my mother was coming in the kitchen to fix up food uh, to eat uh, after they closed. They said, what, What's going on? Mm -hmm. And I said, Oh, I, I feel good. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm well now. <laughs> <laughs> and so I didn't 
tell her about the religious thing. Yeah. So I went to, uh, to the preacher. Yeah. Uh, uh, the next day, and said to him uh, uh, that I wanted to be a minister. I said, How do I become a minister? He said, Well, uh, he was shocked at first, and then, mm -hmm. then he said, Well, uh, you have to uh, go meet with the uh, district committee. Okay. They give you a preacher's license, local preacher's license. Mm -hmm. Then you got to go to four years college, three years seminary. Right. I said, well, I, you know, I said, my grades are bad. I, I don't take uh, anything but shop and, and, and all those uh, uh, those courses that don't prepare you for college. You right. Said, you know, um, and so he said, well, don't worry about it. He said, we'll, we'll talk to the district superintendent. Mm -hmm. And the district superintendent was a cool guy. You know, he was chewing tobacco and <laughs> stuff like that. And he got like me. You know, he said, well, he said, okay, son. I said, yeah, let's see what we can do. I'm on the Board of Regents. I'll get you in. Okay. And so we... Uh, uh, so he went and talked to uh, the border region and got me into college. Mm -hmm. And so I, to college I went, you know, and, uh, and the thing is, my father wasn't very wealthy because he wasn't doing too well in the first store. Okay. And they got me scholarships and stuff, you know. Okay. And the first semester, I I, I actually flunked out. Mm -hmm. They gave me a pink slip. So <laughs> I, I, I said, oh boy, I said, I can't, you know, I can't, uh, can't face life, you know, if I yeah. get flunked out. So I went over and talked to the, uh, the scholastic committee, yeah. and, and I said to the, to these old guys, I said, look, uh, I said, I am not used to studying, I'm not stupid. Okay. It's just that I just fooled around when I was brought up uh, in my environment, and all I did was fight for myself, you know, right. fitting myself. Right. And so, uh, so the guy said, well, I'll tell you what, we'll uh, give you one more chance. If you can make a C plus average mm -hmm. uh, next semester, mm -hmm. We'll let you stay, and we want you to take one course. We want you to take this Psychology 102, which has to do with teaching you how to study. Okay. And so I took that, and I took three field ed courses, mm -hmm. and because I uh, I was good at that. Okay. So, uh, so uh, and then I, I knew the coach. He liked me, too. And by the time I got through out that, that semester, I had a B minus average because I made the A's in those field ed courses. <laughs> so, and, 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 and I made what that, you did best, made, made, made up. up couple of D pluses and D and C. And so, so I went to Hendrix, uh, uh, a place called Hendrix College, H-E-N-D-R-I-X, okay. uh, uh, college in Conway, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. So I graduated with a bachelor's of art degree in phys ed mm -hmm. and a, and a uh, uh, minor in religion. Right. And then I went to uh, Southern Methodist University for my seminary work. Mm -hmm. So I got a master's in, uh, with uh, divinity, okay. uh, theology there. Mm -hmm. and then, so when I got to with the uh, school in Dallas, Texas, uh, I thought I was going to go back to Arkansas to serve a church. Mm -hmm. But because then I realized about racism in, in the church. Right. So they told me, so, well, uh, you know, in the Methodist church, they accept you in, order, they ordain you, which they did me, they got to you your job. Mm -hmm. So they said, well, we can't find a church for you here. I said, why? I said, I was raised here. Yeah. And, and I don't talk Chinese. He said, well, we don't have any Chinese churches here. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, that's, that's stupid. Yeah. So they, they were running around, uh, the bishop and uh, his cabinet, running around trying to find me a place to go. Mm -hmm. And at first, they were going to send me up in Montana to this Indian Montana. Place. And, then, and I said, well, I'll go anywhere. I don't care. Yeah. So I ended up in Sacramento. They found a church near Sacramento in 1954. 